All right, so here's the machine. We'll, uh, we'll do a tour around the outside of it, then we'll uh, boot it up and uh, open the door and take a look on the inside. If you see down here, and I'll move this stuff all out of the way in a second. Um, the whole uh, black container down there, the front of the machine, is uh, the chip tray and the coolant tank. Pan this down a little bit. It's uh, about a 30 gallon coolant tank and that wheels out of the way so it's easy to drain and clean if you want to or need to. The uh, chip tray you can pull out, you can pull out by itself um, if you're just emptying, uh, you know, just emptying that out. This is, uh, here's the motor for it. Um, it's a, it's a high pressure system now. They've upped the, uh, they've upped the uh, PSI of it. So hopefully it uh, works good when we get it hooked up. Here you can see the automatic oiler. Here's uh, just the uh, air regulator and, and uh, oiler. And so the air controls for the, for the tool changer. Here's a panel cooler. It's, uh, my shop's not air conditioned, but the uh, electronic box for the mill is. Huh? Step back here. Sorry about this. Here's in. So this side, the way it's broken down, this is, um, these are all the machine functions. See the controls for all the machine functions here. Um, this is a tool setter here. If you look close, you can see some of the some of the labels, some of the relays and controls. Control the automatic oiler and whatnot. There's the drive controller. It's got its own separate cooling system. This is a battery backup. So you get a warning um, once a year to change the batteries in that. Um, you don't want the batteries to go dead and have no power to the machine because it erases all of the initial setups. And uh, from what I understand, it's a little difficult to get that back. There's the circuit breaker. Down here is the uh, where your power comes in. Down here a little bit lower. Let's see if I can pan this down. Here's a tramp oil separator, the uh, Y-axis servo. A little difficult to see. Uh, just see the uh, linear rails back there. And if you look here, this, sorry about that guys. This is the base of the machine. That's the epoxy granite. You can see how wide it is. And then uh, where the column bolts onto it. Let's see if you can see in there. Let's go around to the other side here and close these doors. So it comes with a transformer. Um, it's actually a 380 volt machine. So you feed the transformer with uh, 240 or in this case, it says 241 three phase and it uh, up converts it to around 400 volts. And then the machine uses 380. You can see some more of that base here. And then the column goes up. You can see how wide that is. You know, that's over a foot wide. Column goes all the way up. And then that, uh, let's see if I can, that's your Z axis servo motor and uh, that sets on the top of the column so you can see that you know it starts right here i've i can't get the camera up there but you can feel the column is right there and it goes all the way to this seam right here is the column and then from there down is is the base of course you got these doors that are removable so if you have a long piece or you need to clean and there's your controller. All right, so we'll boot this thing up. Move back here. Turn the 
turn on the breaker. Cooling fans for the controller come on. We'll go back over to this side. The automatic oiler will fire up and shoot a shot, which it already did. And then you can see the uh, cooler for the electronics are on. Um, We're gonna get a. Uh, I have my airline disconnected, so we're gonna get a. We're gonna get an a, uh, an alert for no air pressure, but I think we'll be fine. So we'll fire it up. Takes a minute to boot up. I really do like uh, this large screen. My uh, old tired eyes uh, appreciate the size of it. Kind of seeing here close to the QWERTY keyboard. There's uh, you know a lot of the function keys. All right, we're almost there. All right, there we go. So you see we have the alarm for uh, low air pressure. We can clear that off, but the alarm's not gonna go away. All right, so here's the inside. See the tool changer there. We've got an edge finder in there that we were just messing around with. Spindle. You can see the table, tool setter, the uh, chip guards. Not much, not much excitement over on this side. You can see the uh, scissor hands that uh, operates the door. You can see how they slide together. To, uh, once you lock the door, F4 is the door switch. All right, let me, uh, let me shut this down for a second and I will uh, move out the, the chip guard or the uh, chip tray in the uh, and the flood coolant tank. So you can take a look at that away from the machine and we can show the base of the machine. So I'll be right back. All right, so you can see the uh, coolant tank and the chip tray pulled away from the machine. Now that has, it's on wheels, so it wheels away. It's, it's, it's real easy. I can just push her there a little bit. Like I said, it's about a 30 gallon tank. And again, the chip tray just pulls out so you can empty it without moving the whole thing away. We'll go in here and you can see inside now. I can pan this down a little bit. You can see that the, the inside of the machine is slopes towards the front. So the chips, the chips will, uh, you know, run down with the coolant. And there's a hose, it comes with a hose. Um, to spray the inside down and to wash the inside down. I don't have that hooked up yet either. Let's go underneath here. So this is the front of the epoxy granite base. You can see there's the uh, transformer. And if you look up there, you can see how it, how it tapers or slopes towards the front to get the chips down. And I'll come back over here. And then you can see the you can see the size and the mass of that base. And that's again right right there is the seam. You can see the lines. So this is the base, and then that's the uh, that's the column there. So. And this, uh, this is the standard package. 
Um, obviously, it doesn't come with a Kurt vise or tooling, but um, you know what you see here um, is uh, you know everything. Everything comes in the package. Now we can come over to the Tormach. Of course, this is steppers, and you could have servos with the MX. And I know we're not comparing it to the newest machine. However, the the uh, the, the base machine, the uh, iron cast iron parts um, for the Series Three and the newer M's and MX's is the same, right? And. You can see the column there. Now I know I know a lot of you guys have uh, Tormox already, so this you know it's not going to be that interesting. But if somebody was trying to decide on what to get, this you know hopefully this will give them a little information. Let's pan this down, and you can see the base, and you can see that it's you know this is not a uh, you know not a knock against Tormox, but this is really essentially a, a benchtop machine. Um, you don't need the base that comes with it, the gray base. You don't need the the uh, enclosure. However, I couldn't imagine using one without it, but it's it's essentially a benchtop machine. And knowing that going in, you know the rigidity uh, problems you're going to have. Um, you know, cut quality is, is pretty good given the fact that it's not a very, I shouldn't say it's not a very rigid machine. Um, you work within those parameters and uh, you can make good parts with it. Look down here. Now I know the new M series and MX have a different style uh, base. It's essentially the same. It does taper towards the center. They've got a, a chip tray and a coolant tank in the center. On the series three, that was the coolant tank. It's five gallons. There's your one shot manual lube. It has storage in the front and the side. You know, the front print, um, I think the Tormach is actually just a touch wider, um, but it's not quite as deep. The new MX and M series have a smaller enclosure, a little bit more compact, which is actually a little bit nicer, um, in, my, in my opinion. Um, and they, their electronics cabinet opens out the back of the machine and not the front like this one. So you end up needing a little bit more room um, against the wall or away from the wall um, than with this, this style machine. You can have the Series 3 pretty close to the wall. You don't really need to get behind it um, ever. So as far as the machining envelope between these two, um, you can look the specs up um, you know, on, the, on the site. Um, the x-axis on, on the 7, I think, is uh, almost 2 inches uh, shorter, um, maybe not quite 2 inches. The y is a little bit more, um, and then the z's are about, are about the same. Um, obviously, the bigger the envelope, the better, but most of the time when you're machining, I, I barely machine a part that's bigger than the vise, so um, it's really not that important. So. We'll get a close up of the of the controls here for you. Here we'll uh, see if we can jog it around here a little bit. Pretty cool, huh? Exciting stuff. <laughs> 